Hello everyone and welcome! Once again we go back to the twisted lands of Shadow Isles. But this time we bring an old friend with us. So let's talk about Yorick Mori. Our story begins in the holy lands of Blessed Isles. There in a fishing village young Yorick was raised. But he was unlike all other children. He had the ability to see and hear the dead. At first he was terrified. Whenever someone in the village died, Yorick would stay awake all night waiting for the new visitor to appear. He couldn't understand why these spirits chose to hound him. And his parents wouldn't help him either. They told him that what he saw were nothing but nightmares. In time he realized that the souls wouldn't harm him that they were simply lost and that they needed to find the way to the afterlife. Since only Yorick could see these spirits, he took it as his job to escort them into the eternity. Soon he found enjoyment in his task. Every new ghost was a new friend. Unfortunately, none of them would stay forever and every ghost would eventually find their place. To the dead he was a savior, but to the living he was an outcast. The villagers only saw a disturbed little boy who spoke to people who weren't there. Tales of Yorick's vision soon spread beyond the village and drew the attention of a small order of monks who lived at the heart of the Blessed Isles. Few of them traveled all the way to Yorick's village with an offer to join their faith. With no surprise, Yorick agreed to journey to their monastery and there he learned the ways of the brethren of the dusk and the true significance of their work. Every monk was equipped with a spade as a symbol of their duty to keep souls in their place. Each of them also wore a vial of water from the Blessed Isle's sacred spring. These were the tears of life and they represented the monk's duty to heal the living. Yet. No matter how he tried, Yorick could never gain the acceptance of the other monks. To them he was a tangible proof of things that should only be known through faith. Their whole lives they were trying to listen to the dead, but even without training, Yorick could do so much more. Perhaps as an act of jealousy, Yorick was shunned by his brothers and he found himself alone again. One morning, as he tended to his duties at the cemetery, Yorick was interrupted by the sight of a pitch black cloud rolling across the surface of the Blessed Isles, devouring everything in its path. Yorick tried to run, but the cloud quickly enveloped him and plunged him into shadow. All around Yorick, living things began to wither and twist, corrupted by the foul magic in the black mist. People, animals and even plants began to transform into vile ghoulish mockeries of their former selves. Whispers emanated from the rotten air around him and his brothers began ripping the vials of healing water from their necks, as if the objects were causing them pain. A moment later, Yorick watched in horror as the monks' souls were ripped from their bodies leaving cold paled corpses behind. Among the quieting screams of his brethren, Yorick could hear voices within the mist. Remove it. Join us. We will become one. He felt his fingers grasping for the vial at his neck, but he was able to force his hands away from his throat and commanded the howling souls to stop. The black mist screamed violently and darkness overtook him. When Yorick awoke, the winds had calmed and the once fertile lands had transformed into hellscape of the Shadow Isles. The black mist wrapped itself around him, trying to overtake the one living thing on the Shadow Isles. Yorick noticed that the mist dared not to touch the holy vial at his neck. He realized that it was all that kept him alive. During the following days, Yorick wandered around trying to find other survivors. But everywhere he went, he witnessed wretched spirits rising from the bodies of the dead. He slowly started picking up on the events that led to this cataclysm. A king had arrived seeking to resurrect his queen, 
but instead he had doomed the isles and everything on them. Yorick wished to find this ruined king and undo the curse he had unleashed, but he felt powerless in the face of the seemingly endless death that surrounded him. Almost lost with grief, Yorick began to speak to the spirits around him, attempting to find solace with them as he had as a child. Instead, as he communed with the mist, corpses left the graves guided by his voice. He realized the bodies he once buried in his duty were now in his command. A glimmer of hope shone from the heart of his despair. To free the dead from the Shadow Isles, Yorick would wield their power and their strength. In order to end the curse, he would be forced to use it. Hundred years passed and Yorick finally found another living being. A man in a horrible state laying nearby a shipwreck. His bones were broken and he was bleeding from open wounds. Spirits of the black mist started swirling around him, ready to feast on warm flesh. But Yorick would not allow that. He threw the man onto his shoulder and marched back into his old monastery. Once they arrived, he put the man onto a massive stone table and began to check his vitals. Most of the man's ribs were shattered and one of his lungs had collapsed. Why do you waste your time? Asked a chorus of voices speaking in unison with the mist on Yorick's back. Yorick remained silent. He left the table and made his way to a heavy door at the back of the room. He had to press his shoulder against it to open it. So much effort for naught, whispered the mist. Let us have him. Again, Yorick stayed silent while he looked through scrolls, herbs and other medicine. For a moment Yorick stared at these items, trying to remember how to use them. He picked up a few that looked familiar. Bandages yellow with age and some ointment that had long turned to crust. Then he returned back to the man. Just leave him, said the mist. He was ours the moment he came ashore. Quiet, snapped Yorick. The man on the table was now gasping for breath. Knowing he had little time to save him, Yorick tried to bind his wounds, but the rotten bandages fell apart as quickly as he could apply them. The man grabbed Yorick's hand in agonized desperation. Yorick knew there was only one thing that could save the man's life the holy vial hanging around his neck. But Yorick knew that the man was doomed and if he used the tears of life, he would be too. He stepped back from the table and watched as the man's chest rose and fell for the last time. The black mist filled the room, spirits crawling out from it in anticipation. The mist shivered eagerly, then ripped the dead man's soul from his body. It cried loudly before it was devoured by its new host. Yorick stood motionless in the room and uttered a barely remembered prayer. He looked at the soulless husk on the table, a bitter reminder of the task he had yet to complete. While the curse of ruination remained, anyone who would come to these isles would suffer the same fate. He had to bring peace to these cursed islands, but after years of searching, all he had found were whispers about a ruined king. He needed answers. With a single motion of Yorick's hand, a tiny portion of mist poured into the man's body. A moment later, it rose from the table. It could see, it could hear, and it could walk. Help me, said Yorick. The body shambled out through the halls of the monastery. It continued onward past countless rows of graves until it disappeared into the mist. Perhaps this one would return with the answer. And that is where Yorick's story ends. I am not going to lie, this was a good one. It is even better when you listen to the poem about Shadow Isles that Riot released. I will put the link to it into the description. But for now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to rate it or comment down below. 
My social media is there too, in case you feel social. And as always, thank you come again. So, unlike the Shadow and Fortune story that was up the last October, it seems like this year the Shadow Isle story will be really good, at least from what I've seen so far. They even kept the old lore that was really good in, they just started building around it, which is awesome. I always hate it when Riot changes the lore somehow, because that's a new thing that I need to remember it and then I start mixing the two up and everything is just a mess. So thank you Riot for not changing Mordecai's story, because it is one of the best. Uh, which by the way, I don't know where, maybe the link will actually be in front of you right now. If you want to watch Mordekaiser, click on it. It is really good, it is another part of Shadow Isles and they didn't change a bit. It is exactly the same. So click it. And see you in the next one.